This is the T.I. hip-hop fans and your kids know. This is the T.I. you see on the news. Hit me. <laughs> and this is the T.I., or Clifford Harris, that you don't know, with his son at his Atlanta home. These are the moments T.I. missed while he was in prison for seven months serving out a felony weapons charge. Good to see you again. I appreciate it. Uh, much different circumstances this time. Last time I was sitting down with you, there was a moment during that interview mm-hmm. where your an ankle monitor went off. Yeah. yeah. That's you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually doing an interview with CNN. As soon as I'm finished, I'll change the battery. Do you remember that moment? Yeah, absolutely. I remember a lot of those moments, but you know, I remember definitely. I remember the one specifically you talking about with you. They saw you in a different light, a lot of people did, because they found that to be a, an awfully humbling moment for a very confident and successful guy. Yeah, uh, you're right, you know. But I mean, I think to humble yourself is to strengthen yourself. So, you know, I think I, I, I survived it. And, and, and I've been able to use it to my advantage, to make myself a better person. Do you think your image is in need of any type of rehabilitation? I'm more concerned with my life than I am my image. My image will be a reflection of my life and how I'm living. I feel like if I make the necessary adjustments in my life, then my image will change with it. T.I. is staying busy with his music career, which seems to be untarnished by his prison sentence. He's already put out several singles since his release from prison and is getting set to release his next album this summer. At least two of these three verses, I believe, I wrote down while I was in the joint. So, you know, I was kind of frustrated. Yeah, you're having a rough day, weren't you, bro? <laughs> well, man, I was in prison, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was just, just a little more aggressive. I like that, though. I was just speaking about my environment. Yeah. T.I.'s environment these days, a lot different than the one he came up in. Hey. He lived in a rough neighborhood of Atlanta and lived a rough lifestyle, which he portrayed in the 2006 film ATL. As part of his sentence, T.I. was ordered to serve 1,500 hours of community service. And one of the ways he does that is speaking to school kids about the mistakes he made and the dangers of guns, drugs, and gangs. But he's not always welcomed. I think it was Woodland Middle School here where Mm -hmm. a parent was upset after the fact. They didn't know that T.I. was going to be speaking to their child. They said they would have pulled their child out of the school for the day had they known it. How does that make you feel to to, to hear that some people don't, don't want you around their children to hear that message or your message? As far as them wanting to pull their children out because of me, if you don't want them to hear from me, as long as you got them hearing it from somewhere, you know, I mean, whoever, who else you going to have come speak to them, who they going to listen to, and who they going to uh, uh, actually take their words for face value more than me? And does it matter who's giving them the message, or does it matter that they're getting the message? How big of a mistake do you think oftentimes we make as parents, as a society, when we don't want... We don't want to hear oftentimes from people that have gone through things. I think it's the children that's really getting the short end of the stick. I think the children are really ones who are, uh, they, they, they are not benefiting from, from, from the, 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 the possible outcome that it could bring. You know, I know I go to speak to youth detention centers where kids, you know, caught cases and they go they in jail and going through the judicial system and you know their parents can't pull them out so they got to hear it you know um if you want your kid to hear it in there then fine you know what i'm saying if you that's why you want them to hear that i wait till they get in there and i go speak to them and you can't pull them out you know it's your choice are you going to get to a point or the first question i might sit down and ask you one day are you still a rapper because you got so many other things and so many other interests that you know what, we kind of forget, oh yeah, he puts out an album every now yeah. and again. Yeah, yeah, I probably will. Yeah. I probably will at some point. Oh, I will still definitely have my hands in music. I still will, because I have a, a passion for music. So I still will produce music. I still will write music. Uh, I still will executive produce music. I still will put artists out. 
uh, through my label and create opportunities and cultivate careers, but I'm not going to be the 40-year-old rapper. <laughs> I, Jay-Z's pulling I would, off. It's I fine. Would not. See, I know, but that's Jay. You know what I'm saying? Jay, that's Jay. That's Jay, and I and he, like you say, he's doing it very well. Yeah. Hats off. But I don't see me doing that. I just don't see that for me. Yeah, everybody just retires mm-hmm. and then they come back anyway. Yeah, right? I mean, but you know what I'm saying? To be perfectly honest with you, man, if I had to, if I had to option to Jay Z, Will Smith, I think I'd go with Will. Yeah. I'm a Jay Z fan. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of admiration and respect for Jay and his legacy. But I feel like Will, man, he get to spend more time with his family. Yeah. You know, he get to be home more, you know, and, and actually raise his kids. And, you know what I'm saying? I feel like he has more of a home life, you know. Uh, so for that reason. And the money don't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, $20 million a flick oh, ain't flip. bad. <laughs> As an actor, I know that it takes time, it takes attention, but it's stable. You know, you're on set, 12 hours, you go home. You know, you're on set, 12 hours, you go home. I mean, and and music, it ain't got no hours. You know, you're at the studio all times of the morning. Okay, well, now you got to wake up early in the morning, catch a flight, travel here, go to the radio station, do a show, go back to the studio, morning, plane, bus, train, car, hotel. You know what I'm saying? It's... it's it's a lot more rigorous. That rigor is playing itself out right now. Tip is getting set to release his seventh album, King Uncaged, in August. What is your expectation this time? Why did it? What do you feel like you need to live up to this time? Right? I got to make it better than the last time. How good was the last time? It's pretty good, some people might say. <laughs> Am I hearing that right? That every album you've had outsold the previous one? Yeah. So how many did the last one sell? Two million. Two million. 2.3. So you got to get at least 2.5 out of success on this one. Actually, 2.3 and a half, but yeah. <laughs>